Um, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, 1934, and I don't remember much of it. Uh, right, we were we were moving from Kansas City to Albany, and my dad was a he traveled a lot. He was a general general manager for B.F. Goodrich, and so they moved him around. So the whole family went with him. And uh, so we were on our way to Albany for a new gig, and uh, we stopped in Akron, Ohio, where my aunt Elsie lived. And she, she was a flapper uh, during the flapper age, and she played ukulele all the time. And she played it, and I liked it. She gave it to me. Oh, I was probably 12, 13, somewhere in there. And so I took it, I played a few chords on it because I could do it. I don't know why, but I could. And uh, so he gets, she gave it to me, and I hopped in the back seat of the car, and I played ukulele in the car all the way from uh, Akron, Ohio, to Albany, New York. I must have driven my parents nuts. But anyway, I did. And that's how I started. And then I decided to graduate to a banjo, which I did. I bought one for 25 bucks from a neighbor. And then uh, that was the beginning of it. So I played all the time. I taught myself how to do it, actually. <laughs> I, my neighbor, he played ukulele and, and some banjo also. So I used to play for I actually started playing when he was in the hospital and he was sick. So I went in and played for him. I was a little nervous about that because I'd never done it before. But I did. So I got over my nervousness and, play, and played for him. That's how I started. I played every day. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It was a, a graduation from a ukulele, actually. Well, that was nice. Yeah. That felt good. And it sounded good, too. I, I liked the sound I was producing. You know, I basically kept playing and played every day all the way through that time. And it's among in amongst football practices and stuff like that, you know, things like that. But I didn't play every day. I played for anything, for whatever reason. And it was it was fun. I grew a few. None of them very good. <laughs> They're all right, but not very good. Um, well, it was really a trio, uh, so it was a band, I guess, <coughs> probably a couple years later. Banjo, bass, uh, I can't remember now, banjo, bass, clarinet, maybe, maybe. I don't remember. Just who was available, who wanted to play. Just came on in and played. Oh, jazz. Popular music. Well, yeah, I used to go and... <laughs> Excuse me. I'd sit in. I had a favorite club I went to. And I was old enough to go at night. So I must have been 18 <laughs> at that time. Excuse me. And I'd go in and hear her play. And then after one o'clock, I think, they play. It was legal for me to play. So that's what I did. I waited till one o'clock. And then I, then I would sit in with her. And she taught me a bunch of things. Her tunes are current of the day. And, uh, which I glommed on to. So 
That's how I started playing. No, uh, the joint. No, uh, it wasn't. It wasn't really a formalized band. It was just a bunch of people who liked to get together. I went to uh, first there's Colgate, which is in upstate New York. This is where I live. I went to Colgate for a year. Couldn't stand it. I transferred to Cincinnati, Ohio, because my dad went there and he talked me into going there. So I went there for a year, and then I went to Columbia for a year because I decided I wanted to go to New York City. So I, that's where I went. So I played. I played New York the rest of the time. Not the rest of the time. A bit. Uh, well, I started off as a med student, pre-med student. And I liked it, but uh, music was, was like more important to me. So I, I, uh, I went to uh, Columbia, and I went to uh, in Columbia I went to a music school. I think, as I remember, so long ago, it's fuzzy. But I, uh, I went to Columbia, and then I, because it was, uh, it was uh, open and uh, friendly, and people liked what I did. That was important. So that's what I did. I, I stayed at Columbia quite a while. I can't. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly where I went. I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I like Columbia. Well, I went. I. I went. Uh, actually, I. Uh, in those days, there was a jazz band on every street corner. Every corner had a club, had music, had live music, and that's where I met these guys. I, Omer Simeon, I met. Omer Simeon was a great clarinet player with uh, De Paris, uh, Sidney and Wilbur De Paris, and uh, they, they all became friends. And I became a particularly a good friend of uh, of Omer Simeon. And I'd drive him home at night, three in the morning, and uh, I had an MG. I remember. I'll never forget it. I had an MG, had a 53G TD, you know, one of the headlights like that. Really nice. And I drive him home at night. I drive into Harlem. He lived at 100, 115th Street and Broadway. I think it was Broadway, yeah. And I drive him up Broadway to 113th, 100, whatever it was. And drop them off, make a big U-turn, and go home. Well, in the U-turn, I noticed from the very first time there was there was a black guy on one corner, and then the other one standing on another corner, just making sure that everything was okay, and uh, I wasn't going to start any trouble. And I played with a lot of bands around. New York City, Manhattan, Bailey, down in the village, and sat in with a lot of different bands and had a ball. And they all liked me. And I, I, you know, they're all black bands, pretty much all the best bands. And those were my favorites, were the black bands, because they played better. They didn't play any Ricky. You know, they played the real thing. The real McCoy. So that's what I liked. So that's how I got going in that, in that direction. Uh, I didn't screw up anything. Uh, I was good enough that I didn't do that. That's for sure. That's one thing I can say for myself. I didn't get in anybody's way. <laughs> and I, you know. So that's what I did. I stayed out of everybody's way and played, and they liked it. Everybody liked it.
So that's kept me going with it. I was in Ohio. Um, there, a banjo player uh, was still in the band when I when I went out there. The band broke up. The that his band, G Mail's band, broke up at that time, at one point. So I, I said, well, I'll go out there and play with them. So I did, and I went out there. The, you know, the only guy that didn't really break up with him was a banjo player. So there were two banjos in the band for a while. And finally I got tired of that and came home, went back to New York. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't do that very long. Probably a couple of weeks, and uh, decided I'd come on back to New York. So I, that's what I did. So then I stayed in New York. Well, I didn't go to Europe until '59, and we're talking about what are we talking about now? We're talking about I don't know '57, somewhere in there. Um, I went to New I went to New I went to uh, I got on a well I joined a band from Chicago they they needed a banjo player and their banjo player quit so uh, uh, the leader of the Red Onion Jazz Band that I was playing with asked me if I wanted to go to Europe I said yeah sure I did and uh, so I went over there on a ship on a German coal export ship. There were four of us, I think four of us, uh, in the band, three, three, uh, three and the fourth one joined us in Europe, the tuba player. It was the trumpet player who was the leader of the band. She was, she was the leader, and the, and the, trumpet, the trumpet player was the leader of the band, Jean Kittrell. She, she just died a couple of years ago. Very nice gal. Well, I I went to Europe with those people, with Gene and Ed Kittrell, a couple. And uh, we met the tuba player in Europe. He just got out of the Navy and uh, got out. He was in the Mediterranean when he got out and joined us in Germany. So there's four of us. And the rest of them fell in line, and we, then we started playing. We started playing in, uh, in Dusseldorf. That's where our first job was, and that was fun. And that was a traditional jazz band, which is what I like. And we did that for all summer. In '59, and I. Came home. The band was together for like three months or so in the summer, and then uh, I decided to come home and go back to work in New York with the Red Onion Band, which I'd played with before, and. Uh, so I did, I did that, but they, I can't remember how, what it was, their ba I don't know, their banjo play they got, uh, he did something else. So I went back with the other band, the one in Europe, and that band was from Chicago, called Chicago Stompers. And, uh, I played with them until 59, the latter part of the summer. And, uh, and after that, what did I do? No, I went to New back to New York. I guess I went back to New York and played with the Red Onion Band for a while. And uh, that was fun. But I can't remember how. I can't remember now why. I know Ray Garter was a San Francisco outfit. 
And uh, he was still playing. They played, well, I played with the Red Guard later on. Played a long time with them. But uh, the Red Guard started up a place in uh, Boston. So I, I went to Boston, played there with the Red Guard. I did that for a few years. And then uh, the rest is history. Yeah, well, I, I've been out here. You know, in and out, and uh, I like it. Uh, Harry Higgins was a friend of mine. He was a lead banjo player, good banjo player. He, he and I were. Maury Wells was a banjo player. I don't know if you know Maury Wells. Ever hear of him? Well, he was a black guy, and he was from L.A. And he'd come up and play with a sit in with a band and he 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 called Harry Higgins and I the two best banjo players in the world in the world that's quite a and it was published you know it was quite a compliment because he was pretty well known himself so Harry and I were the quote unquote the two best banjo players that, that lived And we had a great time. So I did that for a while. Yeah. And then uh, you know, Harry was nice. He'd come over here occasionally and play. We'd have fun together and stuff. But he died suddenly. And so there was nobody left except me. Uh, I became the best banjo player in the world. <laughs> uh, so uh, I played here, and then I, then they opened a club in Boston, and I went there, played lead banjo in Boston. That's where I built my reputation up. Was was in Boston, playing lead banjo. Lead banjo, I mean, playing the lead, playing what was written, you know, or how it's supposed to sound or whatever, for a bunch of banjos. And that's what I did for a long time. Yeah. That was, yeah, several years. And then uh, Harry died, and... Uh, I guess I was left, yeah. But that's the way that goes. So that's what I've done. I just, I started playing and kept playing, kept going. I, uh, I never look back, never look back. Playing for the Red Garter. Uh, I was with uh, Turk. I joined Turk in '59, and uh, I was married at the time, and I had a kid, a boy, and she just took off and went back to New York. And so I, I wanted to save the marriage. Because that was old fashioned at that time. So I decided to go back to New York and try and save the marriage and the kid. Well, that didn't work out. I went back. I was told, I was told, don't go back. Don't go back to New York. But I did anyway. And, uh, that didn't work out, so that was that. So I ended up coming back here. It was in San Francisco, yeah. The club on uh, club on oh, what was the name of the street? Main Drag. Across town. 
can't remember the name of the street now. It's famous. Famous. There's a main street that went from north San Francisco diagonally downtown and across this one street, which was a main drag. I can't remember the name of it. And that garter was on that main street. So that's where I, that's where I hung out, pretty much. See, I played with Turk. Well, I joined Turk when I got out for, back from Europe in 1959. Late summer of 59, I, 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 uh, I went with him. And, uh, what was it, 59? Yeah, 59. Yeah, and I stayed with him until uh, I chased uh, that woman back to New York. And then uh, that was that was the end of that. So that was I don't know, a couple of years. Yeah, fifty nine. So I I played I played until sixty one. That was the last part of fifty nine or sixty. She went back to New York, and I chased her. I lived in the, I lived in North Beach, and I stayed there until all the Chinese came in. Yeah, they were all. They came in at the uh, at the ent uh, at the entrance uh, entrance at the uh, the invitation from the mayor of the town to come to San Francisco and stay in North Beach. Well, North Beach at that time was all Italian, and it was wonderful. It was great. I loved it. it was just a great place to live. It had great food. People were wonderful. You know, it was really great. It was a community. It was, you know, and it was that way until the Chinese came over from China, and they all decided to live in Chinatown, which is what North Beach was. Uh, that was the end of that. They had, uh, I remember, <laughs> I lived on Lombard Street, and she's, um, the people that lived next door, I live in a, 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 uh, a San Francisco flat. It's a long hallway with rooms off of it, and they're all set, living room, dining room. Uh, you know, etc. All the way back to the kitchen, and that's where I. That, it's, it was a typical San Francisco style apartment. So that's how I, I came over here because I like I like the town. I like Sausalito. That's how I got here. I bought this houseboat in '74, 1974. But I, but I came into town, and. Uh, I looked down this way over here, looked out here, and I saw this boat. And it was just uh, anchored out, just an anchor out. So I just pulled myself right in to right here, tied up. This boat's been nowhere else but here. <laughs> so uh, that was that was in '74. And then after that, uh, the, the the town, the places got, you know, pews to be, put the boats in. So that's what happened in here. So, I don't know. That was the first boat here. This boat was the first boat. So that was that was in '74. And. Uh, it was right after that, that that they started getting organized. Kappas got organized, you know, saying you gotta have a boat here and a boat there, whatever. 
So Cabbage was the, Dorothy Steckler was the, was the guest. She was terrible. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to talk about that. But uh, she, uh, she said, okay, I can, I can stay here. So I was the only one here. Towed in from 30 feet out and tied it up. Been here since. Well, um, Steckler, he uh, charged $30 a month. Pretty, pretty good. And it was 30, but 30 a month until Dorothy Steckler and, and her entourage you know, made it more whatever, whatever it is now. They set rent, rent set record, set rents on, down on places. So my first rent was like 30 bucks here. And then they raised it every year, a little bit every year, a little bit more, a little bit more. And now it's ridiculous. It's like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. But uh, that's what they are. Now, the Red Garter was, was still going until a few years ago. And uh, uh, I don't remember when they, when they folded up. But there was a series of them. One, the first one was here. second one was in Boston, where I played. Then they opened one uh, when I was there. I was there quite a while. Um, they opened up one in St. Louis, one on Cape Cod, you know, all around the country. Denver, a chain of them. And so, but I believe the one in Boston and the one out here, mainly Boston. They went belly up after a while. I think there's a couple still going. I think there's one in Denver still going, a Red Garter. And there's a couple other places, St. Louis maybe. It's banjo music, that's what it is. Gave up the ghost about a month ago, just quit. The leader, oh God, what a leader. If you call him a leader, he just decided one day, one Sunday, after we finished playing one day, to quit. And the whole band, he, the whole band quit. So that's the first time that's ever happened to me. So I had no place to go, no place to play or anything. So I'm not playing with anybody right now. Just jobs I get, trios, duos. Yeah, it's fun, exciting. Yeah, I liked it. I, otherwise, I wouldn't have been doing it. I'd be playing someplace right now if I, if I had a place I could play. <coughs> Excuse me. But I can't think of anything. It would be. Comparable. So I have to wait around till somebody offers me a job. That's it. 